Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Digital video, we're going to be discussing AMD's Radeon Instinct, which is powered by Vega. That's right. Finally, we have some concrete information concerning AMD's Vega technology, and it is very impressive. So, I would like to thank both Yalaz as well as Meme Rooney for emailing me over these tips. Um, so, once again, thank you very much to those guys. And the second thing is, this is also an article, so feel free to check it out. It is, of course, linked in the video description. With all of that said, you might be aware that recently there have been some rumours AMD have been conducting very, very um, secretive meetings with certain members of the press showing off Vega. Now, I'm not surprised that this is starting to happen at the end of the year. But now, there have been some official confirmations about this graphics card, as well as some slides which have leaked onto the internets. So, the first things first. Vega is naturally going to be quite the advance over the current Polaris architecture. There are still some questions, and we'll go into what those are throughout this video. But... The main thing is these are accelerators. Now, there is a distinctive difference between that and a GPU. Now, there is certainly going to be quite a lot of crossover when we come to the customer versions, but I do want to clarify once again that these are accelerators. If you don't quite know what those are, the best way I can put it is that they are add-on boards, and they basically will plug into, let's say, server racks and their essential functionality is to offload processing. Therefore, they don't have HDMI, DVI, Display Ports, VGA, whatever connectors, because that's not what they're for, but the same basic architecture is still present in these boards. <coughs> so let's start. Now, the more uninteresting of the two is the MI6 and MI8. Now, interestingly, those names aren't actually just random. They actually represent the amount of T-flops. So MI6 is passively called and puts out about 5.7 of FP32, 224 gigabytes per second, and is powered by Polaris 10, from what I can understand, and is squeezing under the 150 TDP. MI8, meanwhile, has 8.2 T-flops, 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, and is SFF compliant, but isn't, at least from my understanding, passively called. Now, this card... Uh, is probably powered by Fiji, from what I can gather. Vega 10 is the weird one, because it powers the MI25, but it only puts out 12.5 T-flops of FP32 performance. The reason they are using 25, however, in the name, is because it represents the amount of FP16, also known as half precision. We'll go more into that in just a moment. Unlike its other brothers, however, it's high bandwidth memory controller, and they are telling us that it has a TDP of about 300 watts. So why is it that MI25 is being used? Well, the first is that it's great marketing material. Obviously, 25 is higher than 12.5, which makes a lot of sense. And the second is that FP16 is sufficiently accurate for, let's say, deep learning, machine learning, and also a lot of HPC tasks. Now, this very closely mirrors to what we've heard from Mark Cerny and a few other folks concerning the future GPUs from AMD. To give you the too long didn't read, and feel free to check out our PlayStation 4 Mark Cerny analysis video and article, which I'll try to remember to link in the video description also. Basically, currently, the Radeon graphics cards, that would be, for example, Polaris, can technically handle FP16 half precision, but there's no speed-up benefits for it. They did make some changes in the architecture which better support it, but it's still not as fast as what Vega is. So Vega made some distinctive changes in the way it deals with things. So basically, um, the quickest way to explain it is that if you have two instructions which are FP16, they can run concurrently, and basically, those instructions, let's say you have two instructions of FP16, they will, com they will complete in the same amount of time as one FP32, floating point 32, which is full precision. Now that, combined with a whole bunch of other tweaks that they're making in the architecture for Vega, we don't know all of what those are, but some of them include advances in the scheduling units and other tweaks to, let's say, the way that it handles throwing out uh, primitives which aren't going to be utilised in the scene. 
at least according to Cerny, so we can make a very good assumption that this is also going to be in the desktop ve ve uh, version of Vega as well, we can start seeing how there's going to be a large performance increase. What does all of that mean? Well, it means that the performance of this card is absolutely mind-boggling. Bo uh, With Deep Bench GE Double M, you're looking at the MI8 very slightly beating the Pascal uh, Titan X Pascal, but the MI25 absolutely stomps it. You're looking at let's say 60 to 70 percent improvement, which is gargantuan. Now, obviously, this does depend heavily upon the application, and I suspect this is not always going to be the case. There are a few other questions, however. The first is the configuration of the GPU. You'll notice a very curious wording, and that is two times packed math. Now, that could be a reference to the fact that it is, once again, handling uh, 60 FP16 versus 32. However, a couple of folks do believe it might be two GPU cores on the same. I don't think that's the case. My theory is that it is because it's handling FP16 and FP32. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for confirmation on that one. What is, however, definitely a mystery is the number of stream processors versus the clock speed. Now, for example, let's say you have 4096 stream processors, AMD would need to hit a clock speed of around 1500 megahertz. That means, essentially, it's going to operate at a higher speed than Polaris, because Polaris is about 1266 megahertz for the RX uh, 480. The only issue I have with that is servers typically go at a slower clock speed because obviously heat is a problem. For example, if you were to take a look at the Invertec rack with Radeon Instinct, it has three petaflops. No, I don't mean teraflops, I do literally mean petaflops of GPU performance thanks to 120 MI25s. That's bonkers. So, there is some confusion at the moment of the exact specifications of the card. There are, however, definitely some mirrors between this information and some leaks which happened a couple of months ago. I won't go through all of them, but the basic synopsis is that there are going to be a couple of versions of Vega 10, Vega 10 representing the highest end SKU, and basically one is going to be a single card and the second is going to be a dual part card. The really, really weird thing about all of this, in terms of AMD's GPU roadmap, is the fact that we have also heard that there is going to definitely be, uh, thanks to some driver leaks, a Polaris XT2, a Polaris 12, as well as Vega listed in the Mac drivers. So exactly what Polaris XT2 are and Polaris 12 are is a bit mysterious at the moment. I do also want to bring your attention to a... Well, I guess a comparison chart would be the best way of putting it, which is emerged on chip hell. Now, the reason I'm not making a super big deal out of this is because I'm a little dubious about some of the technology behind it. Essentially, what this represents is various aspects of different GPUs. So, in other words, the architecture, the process it's created on, the number of SPs or CUDA cores, the clock speed, the memory type, the bus width, the... Uh, memory clocks, the amount of memory, that type of thing you can start understanding. Now, the questions I have about all of this really come down to the fact that we have some cards on here, for example, the Titan, I'm sorry, the GTX 1080 Ti, which is listed at 3,328 CUDA cores, and we also have information regarding the RX 500s. Now, the only reason I'm not super like yay about this is because unless this individual has information regarding both products. So for example, I'm not saying this is the case, but let's assume that someone decided to leak this who works, let's say Asus or MSI, they would know this stuff because they are probably working with both partners, but it's very unusual for that to happen. The second issue I have is that all of this information seems very accurate. It's not, I don't know, it, it just seems a bit too clean for me. That, that's always a bit suspicious. With all of that said, I personally believe that it's possible that this is like someone's idea of a, basically a, a theory, a guess, and what's happened is someone else has grabbed it, 
and basically trying to tout it as a leak. And this has certainly happened before. We've caught a couple of them ourselves, uh, which I bought up a couple of websites were running with it, and we actually got emailed the exact same image. And basically, some person in China, I'll remain, uh, I'll make his name anonymous. The guy created this uh, thing, basically comparing Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs of, of obviously we're referring not to the current generation here we're referring to the uh, the Zens and basically people were running with that and saying hey this is like a leak when it wasn't this guy just took a lot of time did some research put it together and basically people went to various Chinese forums which he decided to post on and they didn't bother to use Google Translate I'm assuming and basically were posting it so it's kind of difficult but that's the issue, obviously, when you're dealing with language barriers as well, because even Google Translate isn't 100% accurate, which is one of the reasons I always say when I ever report most stuff, take it with a massive truckload of salt until we have official confirmation. Anyway, that's about it for this video. There is a lot of speculation I could give on this information, but... Because New Horizon is tomorrow, I'm going to just wait with bated breath. My theory is that they are going to provide at least some indication of what the hell they're working on with Vega. I could be wrong. The only reason I believe it's possible is because they keep talking about the future of virtual reality. And that would mean, of course, graphics would be insinuated in that discussion. Regardless, hopefully you'll join me. Apologies for sounding a bit snuffly. I once again have caught the plague, apparently. So that's always tip-top fun, isn't it? Anyway, normal stuff. If you've liked the video, definitely like, subscribe, share, and all of that stuff. But do let me know what you're hoping for. Jump us, jump on us on social media. That's all linked in the video description as well. Let me know what your thoughts and hopes are for Vega. And definitely message, I'm um, sorry, definitely comment what you want for Vega in the video description. Like what level of performance for what pricing. Specifically, if they were to release a graphics card which is the equivalent of GTX 1070 or 1080 in pricing, how much faster in terms of percent would you expect those cards to be than, let's say, the GTX 1080? Would you prefer it to be at least level pegging, or would you expect, since it's releasing so much later, to be, let's say, 25% faster? Anyway, normal stuff. See you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.